Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Atom Agnover for this nice invitation to Moscow. And also thanks everybody here. And today, I will talk about these things about the computational material design for uh, sub-hard materials. And uh, normally, I always think about the general motivation, like uh, complicated in the metallics and the uh, bug met metallic glass and the quartz crystal. All these kind of materials, which is uh, composed by the metal element, but they, they really exhibit high hardness, high strength, and typical prettiness. So if you ask why and how, okay, I don't know. But the quartz crystal is really brittle and hard. It's typical like bulk material glass is the same nature. Uh, even I mentioned these questions, but after this talk, I still cannot answer. I don't know. So what I do is first things I would show this FCC aluminum. As we know, FCC aluminum is a very nice metal, which can be, I mean, make plastic deformation. They have metal, this which is like a free electronic gas. They can make a, this uh, electronic conductivity very well. Look here, this stand state, they show in this blue line, which is calculated by density density function series. And this red line just use classical electronic, free electronic series. They fit quite well. And then if you ask why this kind of metal, they showing very nice, good tactility and the plastic deformation because it's metal, right? So, but if we, oh, sorry, okay. If this uh, FCC aluminum, which react with some uh, transition metal like chromium, molybdenum, and uh, tungsten, uh, manganese, like that way, they form this complicated compound, which we call aluminum 12 transition metal. And this kind of structure, which is ordered, okay, they form very typical exohedral structure. Like here, this is five fold structures. And this kind of basic structure is very similar de delayed to quartz crystal. Also, basic structure with the spark metallic glass. And you won't find even this kind of concentration is transition metal is not high. So, how it compare from FCC for this kind of compound? What's different? Actually, their structure is quite similar, but they, sorry, we cannot show this picture. They are really, really similar structure, okay? Uh, you just keep, at uh, this kind of structure, you can see they each five-fold uh, exohedral structure, and they, they have na five, uh, eight neighbor, the same, these kind of things, they ordered together. So, Oh my God. So this, uh, actually we calculate, first thing we just calculate this electronic density state, this density state, and we show, look here, they have the Fibi level, they have very deep suit gap. It's compared to FCC aluminum, actually quite different, okay? Also, people want to answer, well, what's the reason to cause this kind of suit gap, okay? But I would not answer these questions later on. I will mean, keep in mind, please. And then first I will calculate this really kind of chemical bonding, which is used total charge density difference, okay? Which I calculate difference charge density with to this, this kind of compound, okay? Substrate, uh, the sublattice, like uh, two things. One is the exohedral structure, which the show this kind of aluminum, between the aluminum. You see here this charge is locally, uh, localized around these aluminum, aluminum bonds. And here, if we calculate 
another way, which is within this icosahedral structure, which separate this transition metal or aluminum. You will see transition metal with aluminum is also have this charge localization around this kind of bonding. So actually, this charge, if localized along this way, is very typical characterization of the covalent bond. This metal structure is an intermetallics, which is showing some kind of covalent bond. Okay? So, but let's say in uh, 20, about 10 years ago, the Japanese group, they made experiment on this kind of compound is aluminum 12RE. They say, okay, metallic bond was observed for this icosahedral aluminum 12 class, which is icosahedral structure. Okay? So actually they, according to this picture, this picture is totally actually, uh, according to the fully, uh, fully trans transformation, and they show, okay, look here, charge density is around this here. So this is the form, the domain, which is so typical metal. Actually, that's not correct, okay? Because we need to show the difference, but experiment is harder to show the difference, okay? So the calculation, they can show, okay, electron along here. So I would say this compound, there really exists some kind of covalent bond around this atom, Aluminum between transition metal, okay? Even between alum, aluminum, aluminum bond. Then you will ask me, for oh, FCC aluminum is a typical <coughs> metal. And uh, aluminum 12, i.e. this compound, which is covalent bond. So the mechanical properties would be changed a lot. But uh, the first thing, because first principle calculation is very reliable, easy to calculate, elastic constant. You can make these things very fast, okay? First, we try this one. Around here, I just showing from first things, I put any kind of, uh, without this uh, transition metal uh, addition in the center, which means aluminum 12 with vacancy. So the, go to the FCC aluminum, and then put other transition element here, what you observed, okay? You will see that Young module, Bach module, and Shear module have this FCC aluminum, which is sharply increased, okay? Around these three, aluminum, chromium, moly, and the tungsten, which is go to the flat level. And then jump to, again, this is because this kind of three element which they have the same okay, valence number. Okay? And the second one is one more valence number than before group. But the, another thing, if you get this C12 minus C44, which we call kosher pressure, okay? they will show you for this FCC aluminum, aluminum 12 vacancy, which is positive value. And then you go to this kind of compound, which is get negative value. Why? They change a lot. It's what the meaning, okay? So actually, from this one, we say this part we call metallic bond, and here's a covalent bond. Why I say like this way? So the first things I would mention in 1990s, okay, Professor Pettifor from the Oxford University, he proposed a criteria. He said C1, C12 minus C44 less than zero is a compound, I would say, is metallic bonds. And the C12 minus C44 smaller than zero, it should be covalent bond. According to this principle, okay, of analyzing is quite for fit to this policy. And uh, this conclusion, let's say, well, meet to our electronic analysis. And then, if I plot this data in this table, you will see C12 minus C44 is from here, okay, because this kind of thing is metal, which is positive value. 
And this one is, I say, I say is covalent bond, it's negative value. Now, if we come back to G over B, it is another parameter which is proposed by Push, he also from England scientist. He said, as early as in the 1954, okay, Professor Push proposed a relationship between the elastic and the plastic properties of the pure polycrystal metal and the state G over B, which is even smaller than 0 0.1 cell, this might material would be ductility, okay? Ductile. If larger than 0 0.1 or uh, 571 is brittle. If now we use these kind of things, fit to here you will see metal at uh, the totally this value smaller than this one. Okay, uh, so, so, sorry, this is smaller than this one. And the, if this covalent bond is brittle, larger than 0 0.171, 571. So it's quite fitable. Then we just think about if we plot these two, okay, together. One is the petty four criteria, and one is push criteria. One is corresponding electronic structure, chemical bonding. One is related to the mechanical properties, which is ductility and the brittle. Then how do they relate to each other? So we think about, we put very simple picture which is we call correlation. And here we saw G over B value, which is push modulation. And here C12 minus C44, which is kosher pressure. You will see this kind of compound, they show linearly relationship. Okay, metal is around here, and they say another one, this complex intermetallics, which is the same valence electron number stayed around here. If you come to one more valence electron, it says this right corner. Okay? If you come to here to say this is brittle, and here this ductility, it's metallic bonding, it's covalent bonding. So now if we extend this kind of picture, what happened? And so we check this compound, we find about 600. Okay, data which is experiment measured and calculate. And we have, it's about uh, correctly 300 compound put together. Okay, you will see this. Oh, sorry. Okay, so. Okay, you see, see this curve, they change a lot. It's not anymore keep this linearity, okay? They, they change like this way. So what, what will happen? Then we think about how to improve this picture, okay? So we, uh, sorry, it's totally, <laughs> so, it's kind of C, right? But you still have something. <laughs> but, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't know why. And this, uh, they form this universally hyperbolic form, okay? It's one curve. Because C12 minus C44 divide the Young module E, okay? Which is, they form like that way. So, I think, actually, 34 Preteria or the push preteria is the same, the same things, which talk about the one things, okay? It's chemical bonding actually relate to mechanical properties, okay? I think this is the reason they form this kind of curve, which is the, the uniformly hyperportical form, okay? According to this, well, what do we found if we come back? If we, I'm, I'm show here. Sorry. Look here. We found what happened. For example, G over B is diamond. It's the hardest material, okay? And the cubic boron nitride is stated the second corner, this very position, is also the second hardest materials. So we just think about, maybe this hardness also related to this parameter is G over B, okay? 
may be delayed, but I'm not sure. Then we just uh, go back to literature to check. In 1950s, as Pierman and Professor Corhan, he mentioned the hardness would be related to bad materials. But you will see this data actually not like really linearly delayed. Okay, they scatter, especially things up to the, this part you will see is not somehow delayed. And then in 1998, Professor Tert they mentioned, okay, the hardness would be delayed to shear module. Much better, improve. But still you see some really scattering. Okay, the data not really converged to one curve. Okay, so so we think according to our proposed idea. So we just check the hard materials, which G over B and hardness. We put this table, and what we found actually we found we can build fit nicely curve. Is the hardness delayed to the bulk module, uh, G module times K square. This K, which is G over B, is what we fit from the experiment data. And uh, we found what from this curve, you will see they correctly predict all hardness of all known super hard materials. Not, not anyone includes this curve, okay? Even the super hard materials. And the old one, like this way, which has improved a lot, I would say. And uh, so then we will think about, in this curve, you will see why they have some compound fit to linearity. What's the reason, right? So if we come back to, uh, come to here to think, we just think about, if material, they fail within elastic, Okay, scale, then the, without pl uh, plastic deformation, then they will be crack, easily crack, okay, within elastic uh, uh, scale. So according to this uh, phenomenon, so we try this uh, kind of uh, uh, hardness, uh, weak hardness model, and uh, we derive this value. This one, hardness should be delayed to 0 0.151, okay, this factor, this shear module, this should be this linearity. But the linearity which we must ask this material within elastic deformation, okay, not without, without any plastic deformation. So what kind of material should be like this way? Bulk metallic glass. Bulk metallic glass, which is brittle, without plastic deformation. And then I checked literature, you will see they really nicely fit this kind of linearity. Okay, and here this Japanese scientist in 2004, they say, okay, different bug metallic glass, they have different linearity related to the young modular. Okay, now I would say, actually this all related to the shear modular. This is why Professor Ted proposed theory, which is partially correct. And then according to now, so we build this kind of modeling, this predict, predict this hardness of super hard materials. So I would like to check this paper about uh, published in 2007, say one group from USA, they report renew debolite, this compound is super hard. Why this compound, they attract people's attention? Because they can easily synthesize just by ambient condition. Wow, that's nice. Because all kind of super hard materials, they must synthesize under high pressure, high temperature. Because they are metal step phase, okay? So this reason, they attract people's attention. They report this kind of hardness is about 48 gigapascal, okay? But after this paper published, okay, within a few months, French group, they wrote a comment, say, okay, this is not correct. A real hardness should be about 30 gigapascal. Okay, not 
report this value is about 50 kilopascal because they didn't use the large force which is apply these kind of things. Okay, I'm to here. They say this science paper report this value. That's not correct. Okay, they use this large loading forces then get this one. So how if you use our modeling, what happened? Okay, look here. Actually, linear debolide is here. Our modeling is about 30 gigapascal, which exactly fit to the flange group data. And here, I just uh, showing different group that measured this kind of hardness after the science paper report, okay? Why they get so huge difference? For example, here, okay, they use different force to measure these things. That's not correct, okay? And also sample, they if we include a lot of defect, the hardness is definitely affected. Oh, okay, so this is the first and second case I would mention T carbon. This was uh, reported by a Chinese group in uh, two years ago. They say, okay, I found a new number of this uh, carbon aerotropics we call T carbon, with the hardness is about 60 gigapascal. Okay, I would say, I want to check, is this really correct or not? Then, so in this case, actually it's structured like this way, okay? The carbon, they, oh sorry. So the carbon, they form this kind of tetrahedral structure, which is anisotropically related to here, okay? They have huge vacancy space, okay? This means is the covalent bond and the carbon and the carbon not uniformly distribute in this lattice space. If according to that, uh, this paper, they report this value about six kilopascal use the Gao model, which is also Chinese group, was proposed about 10 years ago. And uh, so, okay, according to this value, is another Czech public scientist, which is the, uh, another model, they part 40 gigapascal. But use our model, just 6 point gigapascal. It's not so hard material. So the reason is because this cover the bound not uniformly distributed in this kind of lattice space. That's the reason, okay? And uh, also we calculate this kind of compound, this ideal strength you will find, you see, the weakest ideal shear strength is about 7 gigapascal. It also fit our data. Okay, so, and the, the third case I would mention is uh, we, what we found is so hard materials with chromium before. Why we think this kind of material, okay? The first thing, we check this diamond structure. And also about three years ago, one American group, they report this kind of C4 allotropies of the carbon and so this kind of material is so hard. It, according to our modeling, which ex exceeded this value, is about 70 gigapascal. But you will see here the carbon, they have four neighbor, which is similar to the diamond, but they cause sp3 hybride because they have the corner is 90 degree. Okay, this is square. So I just think about because carbon is not easy to make. Okay, you need high pressure and high temperature. So I just think of maybe boron is possible. Okay, then I check the paper. I found one compound, which is chromium B4, was reported about 1960. You buy flange group. Okay, I checked the boron. You see the boron atom is really similar to the C, the, this tetragonal B4 carbon structure. Okay, exactly the same, but they have chromium. Chromium, what's the law of the chromium in this kind of compound? Because metal, they react with boron, which they can get a lot of energy. It means you can synthesize compound without high pressure. You can do this kind of compound ambient condition. Okay, then uh, we use this kind of uh, first principle calculation. And we found this kind of structure actually not stable. And the real structure should be like this one. This boron framework should be distorted a little bit. Okay, along this energy is TFT calculation. You will find this new structure's energy is lower than this old structure. 
why 60 years ago people made a mistake and cannot found this kind of structure? Because according to powered X-ray deflection, if you compare both structures, X-ray deflection exactly the same. Why? Because boron, they have weak electronic scattering. Compared to metal, which is the almost nothing effect for the XD, uh, XRD pattern. That's the reason. People easy to find this high symmetry structure. Okay, that's the reason made a mistake. So, the first thing is we just check structure. We repeat this kind of experiment and we use, not X-ray, we use TM, okay? What exactly we found the evidence around here, you will see this new structure is old structure. Around between the black dot, they have red dot, which is exactly found our experiment, which is confirmed the new structure. And also, we, because in our sample, it's not pure chromium B4, okay? They have three phase. One is chromium B4, one is chromium B2, and one is amorphous boron. So this kind of materials is really hard to measure this hardness, okay? Actually, according to not pure materials, we measure the hardness is about 35 gigapascal, which is a little bit lower than what we predicted, about 48 gigapascal. Look here. This our theoretical value is about this super hard materials. And we also take this kind of material as ideal strength. You will find the lowest one is also about 50 gigapascal. Also fit to coherent fit to our modeling, okay? And then finally, I would show one case with puzzling B, Tansen B4 or Tansen B3. This kind of material, okay, I would say, why is it interesting? Because they are, people also, since after this science paper report, the people say, okay, this kind of material would be so hard. You know, they can easily see this is ambient uh, condition, okay? Look, so let's say this another paper is penis, sorry. But this compound, you see, they are not really like what we expect is really high, but it's 8, 40, uh, 28 point gig, gig Pascal. Actually, this is real hardness, but this sample is not really pure, okay? And uh, during the past two years, actually, this kind of thing is really hot. As you can see, sorry, published 70 paper on concerning this one because they to cause this huge debate, okay? People say, uh, uh, people say since the history in consist consistent from the 1961 is up to now, okay? The people to say, oh, okay, should be Tanzan B3, should be Tanzan B4, should be Tanzan B12, blah, 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 like that. Why? Because Bolon is really weak electronic scattering, as I mentioned before. Uh, during the past uh, 60 years, people that like define the structure according to the XRD pattern. So for this boron, it's not really useful, okay? So you cannot find this exactly boron position. That's the reason. Okay. And then, just two years ago, or last year, people say, okay, Tangsen P4 actually not correct, which is unstable. Why? Because the phonon, you see, uh, the phonon, you see, negative for this kind of compound, and also, uh, I totally, okay. According to our modeling, Predicted hardness for Tungsten P4 is about, you see, it's about six uh, kickpascal. But it's a new compound, Tungsten, so you say, this experiment found, previously found compound should be Tungsten P4, not P3, okay? Because, uh, because this kind of structure, you see, they are mechanical stable, it's dynamic and thermodynamic stable. And also the hardness is 53 gigapascal, okay? 
And the, before the tungsten P4 structure is only 65 point gigapascal, which is much lower hardness, not matched to experiment data. Okay? So you would ask, is it really like this way or not? Right? So which one is correct? Okay, now according to DFT calculation, we can exclude this one, okay? According to DFT calculation, we say this one is correct. Is correct or not? So the first things we try, sorry. So we use Wispax, okay? To calculate these things, okay, this Uspex result, we take variable composition search, just one line, okay. What we found, okay, we found really found tungsten P3 and also tungsten P4, but tungsten P4 is not ground state stable structure, and this kind of structure is also not the, uh, the same as before experiment proposed one, okay? Which is, doesn't, meet, uh, doesn't meet this exper experiment XRD pattern. So we can rule out this kind of phase. So the only thing is times one over three compound, okay? So we use, but, uh, but we get another confusion, which is confusion about this compound. They have a four different high pressure measured. They found that the C over A ratio with pressure not agreed to each other. Four independent experiment measured, but they found, you see, different curve. Normally, we should expect the same, okay? This trend, what's the reason? So we try to make experiment to solve this problem. So the first thing I will not mention, because this kind of, uh, we made this phase, okay, we uh, made it's a kind of X-lay uh, pattern, which is exactly the same what that before already reported, okay? So what we found, we use high resolution TM, which actually we found both phase, one is tungsten P3, and another one is tungsten P3 plus X, which is a defect structure, okay? Look here, sorry, time is out, right? Okay, so look, from this one, we got the projection along one, one minus two direction. You will see this boron atom and this lies tanks and atom. So we didn't see P4 structure because between this boron, they have a dimer, both which is not correct. But it, one over three compound exactly fit to this picture, right? So which means that we confirm this one over three compound should exist. But if you come to this way, you will see here there is this way Void port have some elements there. So what happened? Actually, so, okay. Actually, and this point, in this side, actually is partially occupied by boron atom, which is in the tissue boron, in this case. So finally, we resolved this problem So this compound should be like this way. They, they have tungsten P3 plus X. This X, which is extra boron, occupied between the two boron layer, one side, okay? So now, what, what the final case? So like this way, they form three dimension covalent bond Framework, which is the hardness 
need this kind of structure. And then, let's say how to solve this experiment. Discrepancy of the four different experiments. Then you see our laser, which is delayed to the, the portion of the extra boron element. You see, we found, for example, Tansen P3.5, very well with two experiments, and Tansen P3.357, which fit. Okay, we solved this problem. So, these kind of things. So, thank you. Sorry, times, but. <laughs>